Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about DP World because what they are doing is quite frightening. Now, if you don't know, DP World is a company that's owned by the United Arab Emirates. Now, in Africa, they currently have ports in Algeria, Angola, Djibouti. Actually, Djibouti kicked them out. I'm going to speak about that because that's a crucial part of this whole video. And then there's Egypt, Mozambique, Nigeria, Rwanda, Senegal, Somalia, and South Africa. Now, this year, they also added Sudan and Kenya. They made a deal with Kenya to control four ports, including the major port in Mombasa. Now, that will tell you the scale of their operations. And especially, you will notice that a lot of those ports are in East Africa because they want to totally control East African ports and especially around the Red Sea. But let me first show you what they say. In the increasingly globally interconnected world in which we live, if you can't reach the markets, you can't sell your goods. And you can be the best in some of these countries, the best producers of goods in the world. Uh, but if you haven't got access to a ports infrastructure, then you're cut off from a very large piece of your, of your potential market. So that's why ports can really make a significant difference in terms of economic growth in countries. And the other thing about ports is they don't just serve an individual country, they can serve a region. One of the problems in Africa is infrastructure investment. And infrastructure is really an obstacle. So for us, it was the right opportunity. And Africa has been our target for a long time. And we are investing a lot in Africa. We are investing in ports, in maritime business, in logistics, in transportation. And we are expanding more and more. So in the next couple of years, you will see DPO's presence in many more African countries. So for us, Africa has a great opportunities, great potentials and uh, the mobile penetration rate is high in Africa. So if you ask me why Africa, I mean, the, the fundamentals are there. So what they are doing is they are buying ports and they are controlling their maritime routes. They're also building infrastructure to get products out of the country. And what he missed and he didn't mention there was farming because they've bought a lot of farmable land and they want to take care of their own food security by farming in Africa and then having a way to take that food out of the continent. Now, if this was just any investment, it wouldn't be a problematic. However, what makes this problematic is what the DB world has actually done. Now, especially in East Africa, they've done the same thing. And it is why Djibouti decided to kick them out. What they do is that firstly, they make very sketchy deals. Now, the deal with Kenya was signed in secret and the news of it just came out here and there. It's been a quite a scandal. Now, in Somalia's case, they made a deal with Somaliland in the Berbera port and that deal was also very questionable. There are other Somali ports. We don't even know do they own them or not. It's all very sketchy and it's because United Arab Emirates is known for their corruption. And then after the deal is done and it comes out, DB World, they give all of these fancy promises. We are going to build a corridor through Djibouti to Ethiopia. We're going to invest a billion dollars. Somaliland's port, Berbera port, will be the most amazing port in the history of ports. It's going to be the biggest port in Africa. We're going to spend half a billion on it. Sudan's port is going to be like this. And in the end, nothing happens. I mean, they do build something. But what they promised and what they give in the end is night and day. And the reason for it's simple. What we have to understand that DP port in Dubai accounts for more than 23% of their annual GDP. Now the ports on the other side of the Red Sea, those are in direct competition with their own ports. Because their ports account so much in their GDP, what they want to do is that they want to control all the trade lines that go through the Gulf and the Red Sea. And what they have done is, for example, they have armed militias. They're supporting terrorist organizations. They are destabilizing whole regions. There is an island of Socotra, which they are currently occupying and they are slowly taking over. They are willing to do anything and everything to make sure that they control 
everything that moves in the Red Sea. And they even have military bases around the Red Sea. Another thing they did in Chaputi and in other parts of the continent is that as soon as they buy a port, what they do is they raise the prices and that raises inflation in the country. Now, before I show you the biggest problem they have and why we should reject all the DP world contracts, let me first show you what happened after Chibuti got rid of them. Dubai's DP World, one of the world's largest port operators, is seeking $210.2 million in damages from the government of Djibouti on an ongoing legal battle over port concession rights. That figure comes from documents related to the dispute seen by Reuters. DP World has been locked in a dispute with Djibouti since 2012. It centers on DP World's concession to operate the Durele container terminal, located along key trade routes at the southern entrance to the Red Sea. Djibouti seized the terminal from state-owned DP World in 2018, citing a failure to resolve the six-year contractual dispute. DP World Chairman Sultan Ahmed bin Salayem has previously called that really illegal. What Djibouti did hurt Djibouti and hurt Africa more than us. In 2018, the London Court of International Arbitration ruled that the concession was legal and binding and ordered it to be restored. DP World is now seeking damages for the estimated loss of revenue and management fees from 2018 to March 31st this year through the same court documents showed. It's also seeking to restore the... So after Chibuti got rid of them, they sued Chibuti in Britain. They also sued the Chinese company that Chibuti made a deal with in Hong Kong. Now, Djibouti has been ignoring all these decisions. Basically, according to this court ruling, Djibouti is liable to pay $54 million every year to DP World. Why did Djibouti get rid of them? In Djibouti, they said three reasons for it. Two I already mentioned. One was that they promised that they would build a lot of things which they never did. The amount that they invested and what they said that they would invest wasn't in line. The product that Shibuti was expecting, they didn't get it, so they got rid of them and they gave the rights to Chinese company. And by the way, me personally, I don't believe that ports should be sold. Ports are crucial to the country, so I think that ports should be nationalized. But the Chinese company, they did build a high-speed rail that leads from Addis Ababa straight to the port. DP World did absolutely nothing. So the Djibouti government, they just realized that, hey, we're getting a better deal with the Chinese. And that's what they did. The second reason that they said was that, you know, these people are raising prices. And this is something a lot of countries are complaining. DP World, they always increase prices because they want to make as much money as they can. And they do not care that these countries are poor. Raising prices of imports and exports to that level is totally decimating our trade. So that's the second reason why Chibuti got rid of it. Now the third and the biggest reason and the main problem with DP World is that in their contract, they force the countries to sign that if you make a deal with us and if we invest in this one port, you cannot compete, meaning you cannot establish another port. This is what they tried to force Djibouti into. They told them, if you want us out, we will sell you your shares, but you cannot establish another port after that. Djibouti also was complaining, even though they had shares in the company, that UEA is basically running DP ports. That even though Djibouti had share in it, they basically had no say. That DP World was doing whatever they want. So in conclusion, I just want to say that when DP World made a contract that they would build the port of Berbera, I was thinking that maybe there will be proper roads and the infrastructure would be built and this would become a major port. But unfortunately, the end product wasn't what I was expecting. They built one road and it has like two lines, you know, coming and going traffic no train system, nothing else, and the port in itself is quite basic. It was very disappointing. And I will guess that Sudan is going to be disappointed 
Kenya is going to be disappointed. But unfortunately, when they decided to get rid of this company, they're going to have a tough time, just like Djibouti is now suffering because of them. But anyways, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please do remember to subscribe, like, share and comment.